And uh, he's going to give us about 10 minutes of, you know, the data that we're seeing drive a lot of change today. So, Mike, if you'll please take it away. Thank you, James. I appreciate that. Okay, so hi, everyone. Um, and thanks again, James. Uh, great to be here. And I hope to spend the next 10 minutes going over some new data that we've published, specifically the parts that relate to today's topic of AR's role in shopping and commerce. So a quick bit about me for context, I'm a 15 year tech industry analyst, most of that time covering mobile through the smartphone era, but the last five years covering AR exclusively, including founding Artillery Intelligence and its sister publication, AR Insider, as James mentioned. Uh, Artillery, for those unfamiliar, is a market research and analyst firm for spatial computing, uh, and that entails lots of research and data deliverables, two of which we're going to draw on today. So the first is our mobile AR revenue forecast, which we just released a few days ago. So this is a fresh look. Uh, and the second is our original survey data around mobile AR consumer sentiments. So starting with the forecast data. So at a high level, we project mobile AR revenue to grow from almost 4 billion last year to just over 21 billion by 2024. And that consists of lots of flavors of consumer and enterprise spending, most of which we're not going to go over today, but this is just for context and perspective on what the kind of whole pie looks like. But drilling down into today's topic is the separate calculation we do for AR's role in influencing the sale of physical goods. And we project that to grow to 36 billion by 2024. Now, first to define this, what we're talking about here is the transaction value of products whose purchases were assisted in some way through AR visualization. And that can be products that you overlay in your space to see if it fits or visual search such as Google Lens to point your phone at a product which could be in a store aisle or at home or elsewhere to contextualize it or get more information. Um, so going deeper, one question here is, why such steep growth? Um, and first of all, it's starting from such a small base, and we see a lot of signals that indicate that this is an area that's primed to explode. And those signals include the technology's readiness um, and investments from tech giants like Google to really push it along, the adoption pace of brands and retailers that we're seeing, but then also the COVID era kind of retail constraints that are really compelling AR product visualization for commerce and e-commerce especially. Um, but one caveat before we move on um, that I should add is that this, what we're seeing here on this slide is the you know revenue that is not counted as AR revenue per se. In other words, it would inflate AR's value if you count the $2,000 couch that you bought using the IKEA Place app as AR revenue. That's retail revenue, it's furniture revenue, it's not $2,000 worth of AR that's being exchanged. But I bring that up because that contrasts what we do count as AR revenue, which is the proportionate part of the value chain um, in the form of AR enablement software to kind of make it all happen. And here's what that looks like. So the, the blue and orange bars here comprise the AR influence consumer spending totals we just looked at and further segmented here by retail and e-commerce. But the green and yellow bars represent the revenue for startups who provide AR commerce enablement software. And that can either be on a SaaS basis or sometimes with affiliate revenue. Um, and I should also qualify here that this is separate from AR advertising spend, which is paid placement and campaign distribution for AR lenses. So going one level deeper, if we look at the channels that are driving this activity, it's a mix of visual search and apps and web AR and, you know, social channels. And we actually believe that web AR will pull ahead in later years um, based on its easier onboarding and less friction and activation from web links and even QR codes in some cases. Um, and there are lots of signals we're seeing from tech giants like Apple and Google that AR commerce will largely be activated through web AR. So that's something we have to continue looking at. Um, so lastly, in terms of consumer spending breakdowns, we segment that by vertical. And I won't read through all of these, but one theme here is that the top spending categories map to a few different factors. So where there's a combination of brand and retailer motivation to adopt, and also the, the fact that the products themselves are conducive to AR visualization. And if we chart those variables, we can see that consumer spending categories for AR commerce continue to include cosmetics and clothing and jewelry, home appliances, and a few others that, that you see here. 
So moving on to our survey data now, um, one of the things we do twice per year is original consumer surveys in collaboration with consumer survey specialist Thrive Analytics. Um, and here's a quick look at the respondent breakdown. It's a pretty diverse and population representative sample. Um, it includes over 1,000 U.S. adults in wave three and more than 6,000 people across all three waves of research. So one of the questions we ask AR users is what formats they're engaging with. And the headline here is that AR as a feature continues to lead for the second year in a row. And this consists of AR features in non-AR apps. So Snapchat lenses is a good example of that. And this really stands to reason that it's a leading format because it lets AR sort of piggyback on established apps. So drilling down on one level, what types of app categories and content are resonating most? Um, and gaming continues to lead the pack for the third year in a row, followed by social AR. But more to today's theme of AR shopping and commerce, um, visual search and product visualization have both spiked over the last year, which I think is notable. And this really aligns with an ongoing theory that we have that AR will move into more utilitarian and high frequency use cases as the technology itself matures. And that includes AR's role as a shopping utility. And we're seeing that really bear out here in these consumer survey results. So speaking of frequency, survey respondents are reporting pretty favorable usage levels if you consider that 71% are active at least monthly and 46% at least weekly. But what's more interesting is that if we cross-reference the last few slides, if we look at those same frequency categories, but then look elsewhere in the survey to see how those groupings of respondents separately answered the types of AR experiences they're using, we see some more confidence signals for AR commerce, specifically 41% of the highest frequency users are reporting using visual search. And then lastly, what do users want to see next? So gaming continues to be in the lead. And then there's a long tail of kind of evenly distributed affinity areas like social and city guides and remote tech support. But there are two things I want to underscore here. One is the dip in gaming interest. And the other is the spike in interest for in-store retail assistance. And both of those points validate, again, this thesis that as AR matures and reaches broader audiences, gaming's early lead could give way to other areas that represent present these kind of daily utilities. And that includes being able to summon product info from within store aisles through things like visual search. So nearing the end here, um, to synthesize a few points, what did we learn? So AR commerce is primed to explode due to several converging factors we're observing like COVID era dynamics and self-interest and motivation from influential first forces like Google and the adoption rate of brands we're already seeing. Um, second, the revenue opportunity in AR commerce is really in the enabling technology to make it all happen. And the biggest adopters on the buy side will be product categories with both a drive to adopt and good fit with AR visualization. Um, AR as a feature is a you know, very prevalent and growing form of AR that I would kind of strongly consider and look at. Um, and as it gives AR a, really a delivery system that piggybacks on already popular apps. Uh, for similar reasons, we're bullish on web AR as a format to watch given really frictionless activation through universal web links or retail markers even. Um, and gaming, as I mentioned, has led the way, but as AR matures, we believe that killer apps will really germinate from high frequency utilities like visual search. And lastly, we're bullish on AR for retail assistance to empower shoppers with overlays and tr pricing transparency and other in aisle utilities. Um, so that's actually it for me. Um, there's a lot more where that came from. Um, and we, you know, have only really scratched the surface with a few data selections, but I hope it's been valuable to set the stage today. Um, and now I will uh, turn it back to you, James.